my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I've got another book talk video to share with you guys and today we are talking about Mr. Fox by Helen Oyemi. Now this book was lent to me by a friend of mine. Uh, she had read it and had a really interesting response to it and she wanted me to read it and see what I thought of it and I was very excited to do so. So I just finished this book like two minutes before I came to sit down and film. I finished it and I've got to say <laughs> I loved it. Now, before we get too much into it, I'm going to tell you this book's a hard one to talk about. And you'll see why as I get on with this review, but it's not your typical everyday sort of novel. It's unlike anything I've ever read before, and it's left me really wanting to check out more books from this author. I know she has more books out. I will definitely be looking into them. And it's also not going to be for everyone. What I found really exciting about it, you might find really frustrating about it. It all depends on your taste, what you like, in terms of a book. So, let's get on into it. We start off with our main character, St. John Fox is his name. I've also heard people pronounce it St. Jean Fox. But I'm gonna call him St. John because that's how it's spelt. S-T period John. I don't know if I'm just not familiar with that name, but we're just gonna call him St. John. And he's a writer. And uh, right off the bat, right out of the blue, we meet Mary. And we learn that she is his muse and she's coming to him for the first time in many years at the beginning of the book because she's upset with him. She's upset with the way that he keeps killing off the women in his stories. She's not having it. So we quickly learn as well that she's not real. She's um, a character in some of his stories. She's his muse, but he's all, she's also just a figment of his imagination. So right off the bat, I was really intrigued by that. So she's come to him and she's very upset with, like I said, the way he keeps killing off the women in his stories. And he's kind of like, you know what? It's just, it's not that bad. It's not, it's, it's fine. And she at one point even refers to him as a serial killer. And from there, what happens is we kind of go into a battle of wits between the two of them where we go back and forth between the stories that they've written. What I really like about this book is that there's a lot of surrealism in it and a lot of the times you find yourself having to slow down, read it different, read it slower, digest it more, and just really let yourself process what you're reading. Because the line between reality, like the present day, portions of the book versus the stories in the book they sometimes get blurred and you're not sure which is which which I loved. Now what I also really loved is that these stories that were handed and we go back and forth between they're all fantastic stories they're all really weird but they're all so well written that this kind of could almost also stand alone as a short story compilation um, if you wanted to kind of tackle it like that but the stories were so interesting and the writing, first of all, the just the writing in general of this book is so good. It's so well written. It's so beautifully written. I just found myself constantly intrigued by the way that Helen tells a story. She's such, she's such a good writer and it would take a writer of that kind of caliber to be able to pull off a novel like this, if that makes sense. I, I can't imagine it being written by anyone else. I can't imagine hearing it in anyone else's voice. It was just so perfectly written. So as the story goes on, and there's not really going to be any spoilers in this video because, like I said, it's a difficult book to talk about. Just as whenever I review any short story collection, it's hard to talk about because you'd have to go through each story piece by piece and that would take forever. And it wouldn't even really make sense to you if I was to do that for this, just because it's so layered. 
And what I really loved about it too is as you're reading through the stories and and the reality. So there's the stories and the reality. So as you're reading through the stories, you're noticing sometimes characters repeating themselves. You're also seeing some of those characters repeat themselves in in the reality sections, if that makes any sense. And St. John Fox, as well as having Mary his muse, he also has in the reality his wife Daphne. Now when he's writing the stories, he's generally writing Mary as the woman that he's seducing, slash marrying, slash killing, <laughs> and it's all very violent. And then in the real world he has Daphne, his wife, and it kind of, as the story goes on, it takes on a air of sort of magical realism as Daphne, his wife. At one point she begins to wonder if he's having an affair because she can see he's very distracted. He's going out all the time and eventually he tells her like, no I'm not, or if I am, it's with a figment of my imagination. It's with a character that I've invented. And that doesn't even really make her feel any better. You know, if anything, now she's competing against this sort of idealized character in his mind, which just kind of makes it all the more impossible, you know? And it's just very interesting. And as the book goes on, eventually Mary and Daphne, like, somehow they intertwine and in the reality portions of the book are having interactions like Daphne herself has conjured up the image because St. John he very clearly sees Mary as though she's an actual person in his home and so now Daphne is having the same experience and um it's just very interesting. So she's having the same experience now. She's seeing Mary in a physical form in her home. And you know, when St. John's not at home. And it's just, it takes on this whole other thing where Daphne sort of develops a fondness for Mary as she herself gets to know her. I also found it interesting and this might be considered a spoiler, so if you don't want a spoiler, now's the time to click away. <laughs> because I don't know how much of a spoiler this is, but just in case, if you've watched this far into the video and it sounds really interesting to you and you don't want any spoilers, click away now. Thanks so much for watching. But for the rest of us, we get to a point where we start to see, and Daphne and Mary also start to see, Daphne especially, she starts to see that Mary is a version of herself. At least that's kind of what I took away from it. I feel like this book has so many layers that I'm sure I missed probably a hundred of them. You know, there's things I missed. I feel like this would be a book that would really benefit a second or third reading um, because I'm sure, I'm sure I missed a lot. But there was something that to me was sort of Daphne seeing herself reflected in Mary. She saw that as he had created this person, a lot of it is just a version of Daphne. And I think she finds a bit of peace maybe and comfort in that. And yeah, I just, I really loved it as much as it made me think, it also kept me turning the pages. Cause like I say, the short stories inside of here while they're absolutely wild and sometimes insane they're so fun to read and I just kept I kept looking forward to the next one and I just thought the characters were really well written and that they were written in such a way that it kept my interest the whole time even during moments when I had no idea what was going on <laughs> so there you go you guys that's my review for Mr. Fox by Helen Oyemi and uh yeah, definitely, if you think that's something that sounds interesting to you, definitely pick it up and give it a read, see what you think. And I would love to know in the comments below, if you have read this, what you thought of it. Because um, before I filmed this video, I searched on YouTube 
to see how many reviews of this book were up because it's not a new book. It came out, I think, just shy of 10 years ago. I think it came out in 2011, maybe 2012, but I think 11. And um, there weren't a ton of reviews, so I don't know. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. And yeah, um, I hope you guys have a great weekend. Coming up next week, I'm going to be reading or doing a book talk for you on a book called A Witch in Time, which I just picked up the other day because... As you know, if you've been around here for a while, I love witch stories. And this is the first time in a while I've seen a title just sitting on the shelf at the local store that seemed to be witchy in nature. And I can't wait to read it. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you guys on Monday with a new vlog. Bye guys.